Hello my friends, hope you're all doing fine today. Friday, it's raining here in Japan. Just a quick video. People have been asking me about my thoughts on this moon map. There is a video, it's called I think the lost history of flat earth. Very interesting video, the guy do have some points. But I, as far as the moon map, I have to come to disagree. I don't think it's nothing like they are saying it is. Just, uh, you know, people have seen a lot of stuff. When they look at the moon, they come up with different things, the different interpretations on the images. So I went over, I watched it, and, uh, but I, I really made some comparisons. And I want to look at them now and share with you okay, what I have found. So let's go ahead and look at these, them, his maps. All right, this is the world map key and, and the, the other ones demonstrating the four corners according to the book of Enoch. And he places his moon map as the land of the north. Okay, not, nothing wrong. I do agree there are more lands. Definitely, I have said that in the past. The, there is more land. But let's, let's take a look at this. This was the great American eclipse of 2017. Now, we know, according to this eclipse, the size of the moon. We know the moon, size of the moon, it's about 70 miles. If you remember, the eclipse it crossed across the U.S. from west to east. And uh, we look here in an image farther away showing the whole United States. You see the size of the moon compared to the size of the United States. Now, let's zoom out even more. This is from time and time and date.com. You can barely see the size of the moon. And I have uh, con converted this image into a flat earth map. You're going to see that it, you can barely see the moon. So the sun and the moon being of the same size. I think Rob Skiba made a flat earth model with a spinning moon and sun with a very tiny moon and sun. So I believe that's, you know, only 70 miles. Now look at this. This is the flat earth as looking from above. You see how tiny the moon is, and there is an estimate that the size of the flat Earth is about 40,000 miles. So you can imagine 70 miles compared to 40,000 miles. Now let's just throw this over his interpretation of the whole flat Earth. See how tiny the moon becomes if you throw it in there, in the whole realm? It's minuscular, it's so tiny. So my question is, how could the moon, so tiny compared to probably 300,000 miles, be able of registering the, the continents on its surface? And does he imply that uh, according to, you know, the zodiac wheel, okay? So according to the whole zodiac wheel, it takes 25,000 years. So does he imply that it's been already 25,000 years and the moon had gone all over the realm and recorded the shape of all the continents. Uh, does he imply that? So we don't know. So there's a lot of things there that doesn't really make sense. You know, it reminds me of another story of someone who went, because he claims he was, you know, lost in the forest and this guy Sturgis came along and gave him what he wanted, you know, to know about the sh shape of the continents. So it reminds us of another story of someone who went to the forest and met somebody who told him also the shape of, not the shape, but the, the shape of the continents. So let's put a grain of salt before, you know, rush into in, any interpretations. I, I don't think that the moon, as tiny as it is, as compared to the whole flat earth, the whole realm, could have registered along the years the shape of the continents. I don't think it is. So I don't think the moon map is the map of the flat earth. One more point I want to throw. I think on the, his moon map, the distance between Brazil and Africa is um, almost like 10,000 miles or 11,000 miles. Glissens, he did a very good job back in his days when he uh, interviewed mariners and captains of steamers coming from the tip of South Africa to South America. It, the distance is 5,700 miles. It took them about 13 days to come right by steamer from 
uh, South Africa to Brazil. And all the Portuguese bringing slaves from Africa to Brazil didn't take them that long. Now, if uh, if the distance is 11,000 miles, that that's crazy. That That's too much. Even a flight from Rio to Luanda in Angola takes about nine hours. So that would be impossible. But, you know, as I said, I don't, I'm not rushing to any conclusion. I'm still sticking with the listens map and the flat earth map as it is. But he had some good points. So I read some of the comments. Some think that he's just a shill trying to throw us off. The You know, everybody attacks the flat earth map. Okay, but I'm not rushing to conclusion now. I'm still sticking with the glistens map. Just a short video today, guys. You all have a good day. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.